So system identification involves a building's mathematical models of a dynamic system based on a, sim a set of measured stimulus and response data sample. So the keyword for the system identification is a data. Okay, respond data samples, a set of the measures and stimulus and respond data samples. And system identification can be used in wide range of applications to, to names such as meta, mechanical engineering, other than engineering such as biology, psychology, metrology, economics and etc. So, there are various reasons why you want to find a physical or a transfer functions that represent a models based on the input-output data. For example, engineers use a system models of a relation between the fuel flow and the shaft speed in order to optimize the efficiency and operational stability of the jet engine. So this is the reason why this, the engineer uh, need a systems or the model that represent the systems in order to optimize the efficiency and the stability of the jet engine. Okay. Other than engineering, biologists and psychologists use system identification techniques in areas such as uh, eye pupil response and heart rate controls. Other than that, metrologists and economists build mathematical models for the forecasting or historical data for use in forecasting, etc. So therefore, system identification is using experimental data obtained from the input output relation to model dynamic system. So this is the basic uh, diagrams you have uh, figured out before in control one, control two, advanced controls, and now in system application, the basics of the control systems. Now, uh, figure 1.1 focus on how to use system identifications in the model-based control system cost control design process which involve uh, identifying the models of a plan, analyzing and synthesizing a controller for the plans, simulating the plan and the controller, and deploying the controller. So a plan is a real-world physical system that you want to control. So this the basic uh, figure for plan modeling, control design, simulation and deployments using lab view. So system identification is the initial step in identifying a models of a plan in the model based control design process. And the system identification is an interactive process, process yang berulang. So first step is to acquire raw data from a real world systems, okay, the data collections. Then we format and process the data as necessary. And finally, select a mathematical algorithm that you can use to identify a mathematical models of the systems and use the resulting mathematical model to analyze the dynamic characteristic of and simulate the time response of the systems and use the mathematical models that we predict before to design a model-based controller. So this the basic system identification software we can use either LabVIEW system identification toolkits or the MATLAB system identification toolbox. However, in our course, we will go to, we will go through the MATLAB system identif identification toolbox. 
So as a definition of system identifications, the determination of the mathematical model of the system, so we call as a system identifications, as we mentioned before, and the term identification was first introduced by Zadeh uh, in 1956 that referred to the problem of determining the up input output relationship of a black box or modeling based on the observed experimental data. Again, the keyword is the data, experimental data. So now, system identifications is the process. System identification is the process okay, of determining by means of practical testing the transfer functions or some equivalent mathematical description for the dynamic characteristic of the system component. So while we need a model first to predict the system behavior and second to design any type of the controller and to be specific adaptive type controllers. The main objective of the system identifications is to obtain a parsimonious models that adequately representing the system. So what is the parsimonious models? Parsimonious models is a system or the models with as a few parameters as possible for a given quality of a model. So even though the parameter is uh, little, but it can uh, represent the system accurately. So that's the parsimonious model. Okay, so we want to predict the structure, the parameter or the disturbance involved uh, or relate to the models. So I, as I mentioned before, there are a various reasons why you want to determine the systems or the model that represents the physical systems. So one of the reasons is you want to design a controller. Okay. So uh, this is the basic block diagrams of the systems. We have models, plan, controller, and then a control input output, the reference signals, the outputs, and etc. So a model is a system that transforms an input signals into an output signals. So typically it is represented by differentials or difference, difference equations. Okay, so this is the models. And a model will be used either implicit or implicit in control design. Okay, so this is the basic idea of the control systems. For signal and system definitions, as a recap, I believe all of you know the definitions of the UT, WT, etc. Okay, we go through it again as a revision. So typically, a system receives an input signal XT. Okay, so it's XT, generally a vector, and transport transform it into an output signal YT. In model means and control, this uh, further broken down, such as UT is a uh, input signal that can be manipulated. We call it as a uh, control signals. UT is a control signal. WT is a, is an input signal then can, that can be measured. Measurable disturbance. So WT is a measurable disturbance. VT is an input signal that can be that cannot be measured. So we call it a unmeasurable disturbance. So VT is a unmeasurable disturbance. While yt is the output signal. So yt is a output signal. And typically the system may have higher states xt. Okay. Determinations of models. Basically, there are two ways of determining a mathematical model of the systems. Number one, by implementing known law of nature. And number two, by experimenting on the process. So a popular approach to obtain a model is to combine both by implementing a known law of the nature and the experimenting on the process. So we combine both these. So the knowledge type models are based on the law of physics, chemistry, etc. 
and general and extremely complex. While the dynamic control models is based on the relation between input and output variation of systems and is suitable for the design and tuning of the control systems. So different approaches to system identification depending on a model's class. Either it's a linear or non-linear models, either it's a parametric or non-parametric models. So what is parametrics or non-parametric models? Parametric models involve parameters. As for the examples, the coefficient of different equations, the state equations, and the transfer functions. So parametric method estimate parameter in a user-specified models. While for non-parametric models, it not involve any parameter and it usually graphical representation such as a time response, frequency response, impulse response, and correlation, etc. So non-parametric method try to estimate models uh, to estimate a generic models. Okay, so that's the difference between parametrics and non-parametric models. So the approach of the system identification you want to use it depend on the on the class. Either it's a linear or non-linear, either it's a parametric or non-parametric models. Classifications of the system identification problem. So system identification is generally done in the time domain, but analysis can be done in frequency domains. So there are three uh, classifications of the system identification problems. First is the white box problems. It involves a first principles information. It's used to derive the full models. So system identifications can be used to reduce the order or complexity of the systems. And then a gray models, gray box problems. So it involves a certain structural information about the models is already available. So this model does, however, still have a numbers of unknown free parameters, which can be estimated using system identification. So there are some parameters that already know the information, but also we have uh, unknown free parameters. So we can uh, estimate by using the system identification. And the last one is the black box problems. So for the black box problems, there are no the no prior models is available, and both the structure and the parameter must be determined. And most system identification algorithms are for this type. So we have no knowledge about the systems. We just have a input output data. We want to predict the parameters and the transfer function that represent the data. And we call it as a we call it as a black box problems. Okay, so these three classifications of the system identifications problems. Okay, classifications of the system identifications for black box problems. So for black box problems, it's, we can call it the complete identification problem. This means that we do not know anything about the basic property of the systems, such as whether the system is linear or non-linear, either it's a parametric or non-parametric. Obviously, this is an extremely difficult problem to solve. So usually, some kind of assumption have to be made before any meaningful solution can be attempted. Okay, so that's the definition of the black box problems. And then gray box problems, we can call it as a partial identification problems. And this category, some basic characteristics of the system, such as a linearity, a bandwidth, any, etc., are assumed to be known. And however, we may not know the specific order of the dynamic equations or the value of the associates coefficients. So it we can call the gray box problem as a partial identification problems. And while for the last one, the white box problems, we can classify and call it as a clear identification problems. And in this category, all basic characteristics of the system, such as anything, linearity, bandwidth, etc. are known. 
and the specific order of the dynamic equations or the value of the associate coefficient still to be determined. So that's the white box problem. So the, the difference between the black box, gray box and the white box problems. The black box is the complete identification problems. The gray box is the partial uh, identification problems while the white box problems is the clear identification problems. Four kinds of experimental data for generating some models. So the first is transient response. You can use either impulse or step inputs. Frequency response data, you can use a sinusoidal input at uh, many frequencies. Stochastic steady state information, you can use a natural source of randomness. You can, you can check in the uh, MATLAB toolbox, there are a natural source of randomness. And the pseudo random noise data, we can use the PRBS signals as the inputs. So there are five steps to determine dynamic models to experimental approach. Or we can call it at the five steps for the system identification approach. So the first one is the experiment design. So input output data acquisitions under an experimental experimentation experimentation protocols. So the purpose is to obtain a good experimental data, and it includes the choice of measured variables and of the characteristic of the input signals. And then the choice of the choice and selection of a model structure or the complexity. Either the system is linear or non-linear system, so a suitable model structure can be chosen using the period knowledge, or we can use a try and error methods. And then choice of the criterions to fit uh, a suitable cost functions is chosen which reflect how well the model fit the experimental data. We, can, we will go through this uh, one by one so, uh, in the next chapter. Estimation of the model parameter and optimi optimization problem is solved to obtain the numerical value of the model parameter. Either it's the first order model, the second model, second order model, and etc. And then a model validations verifications of the identified models, the structure and the value of the parameter, and the models is tested in order to reveal any inadequacy. Okay, so this is the step for the system identification approach. So it uh, involves five steps as uh, the first one is data collections, the model representations, uh, the choice of criterion fit, the parameter estimations, and the models validations. Okay, we go through one by one. The first one is uh, an experiments and data collections, and it's often good to use a two-stage approach. First, the preliminary experiments, uh, the step on impulse response test to get basic understanding of the system dynamics and then we can get the linearity, static gain, time delay constant and sampling intervals and then the data collections for model estimations so we carefully design experiment to enable good model fits and then now we can get the operation point, input signal type, number of data point to collect etc. Okay. As I mentioned before, the preliminary experiment using step response. So this step is useful for obtaining the qualitative information about the systems, such as the static gain, the time constants, or the rise time, and the resonance frequency. And the sample time can be determined from the time constants by using the rule of thumbs, either 4 to 10 sample points over the rise times. Okay? So this the explanation, further explanation about the first steps of the preliminary experiments using step response. For data collections, experimental design and observations, 
This is a procedure which produce input output data from the process to be models. And the procedure includes what signal to measure, when to measure them, and what input signals to be used. Okay, so what's data collection is all about? It's a procedure includes uh, uh, what signal to measure, when to measure them, and what input signal to be used. And these parameters are chosen such that the maximum information regarding system response are contained in the input output data. Okay, so we want to use the input output data to identify the systems. In observing any given dynamic system, input output data is recorded for the full dy dynamicity of the systems in real time or simulated using a computer system. To capture the dynamic of the system, so various input are applied such as a pulse input, step input, a random binary sequence or we call it an RBS, pseudo-random binary, PRBS, M-level pseudo-random, MR, MPRS and multi-sign inputs. So for a real-time system, many of the signal can be introduced while the system is in operations and the major data should be analyzed and some preprocessing may be applied so before continuing with the following step the data is divided into two sets one set is for trainings and the other set is for testing or validating the identified models okay Next step is a model representation, or we can call it as a model structure. So there are a set of candidate models. So these include the models of the class of models to be used and depend on the amounts of period knowledge about the system that we know and the objective of the identifications. So this class includes state space models, Laplace transform, time difference equations, Volterra series, neural network models, fuzzy logic models, etc. And once the class of models have been chosen, then the determinations of model structure such as the order of the models is uh, most or the most important a problem to be considered okay so how we choose uh, the class or the models based on the knowledge that we have and the objective or the identifications so there are a few class or models that we can consider such as uh, I mentioned before the state space model etc okay but the most important thing is that what is knowledge that we have uh, regarding the physical systems and then what is the objective of our identifications okay so that's how we choose the model structure or the model presentations there are various types of uh, system identifications one of it we call is at the artificial neural networks or or ann okay if uh, we using a and N as the black box system identifications. So this step is rather easy as the mechanism underlying the system. Under observations that we there are a few assumptions that already uh, stated in the artificial neural network systems. Okay, so the structure and parameter to be certified, the given data set will be fully uh, encapsulated by the A and N inclusive of the neuron functions and interconnection bits. So uh, as we uh, go through before, there are a few uh, assumptions we, that we have to do. But when we're using artificial inter, uh, neural networks, the uh, assumptions have been um, considered in the algorithm. So it will be easier for us. And as for the tradition approach, this procedure is much more difficult, especially in the nonlinear cases, since uh, 
uh, we are we don't know either the assumptions that we uh, stated before is suitable or not and we have to do, keep trying by using the try and error method to check either the assumption that we uh, use either is right or wrong and we have to keep doing it again until we get the accurate uh, model representations okay so that's the challenge uh, for the system identifications in a traditional approach next step is a parameter estimations or we can call it as a model estimations okay these are things that uh, some of you familiar with if you are taking you were taking uh, advanced control engineering before so we have touched this part before so if the model is in a parametric form numerous techniques are available to estimate the unknown parameter so this vary with respect to the loss functions to be minimized the class of the models and the chosen model structure the most common method are gradient method uh, stochastic approximations direct search less least square method maximum likelihood and kalman filtering techniques so this the uh, common method for the parameter estimations we have go through least square uh, before and gradient method before uh, in uh, event control engineering okay after a suitable model structure has been selected the next procedure is to accurately estimate the model parameter beside the parameter estimation method that have been, we have go through before in the previous slide there are many alternative solutions to the model structure selection estimation such as the orthogonal least square OLS and a second search procedure using stepwise regressions so this technique have been shown to successfully solve solve either linear or non-linear system identifications and other popular techniques such as genetic algorithms this is the optimization methods GA genetic programming GP Volterra polynomial basic function VP VPBF together with orthogonal least square OLS fuzzy algorithm and various artificial neural networks okay just name a few we will touch one or two uh, methods and we go through how to uh, the computer program etc okay for the parameter estimations and the final state in the uh, system identification is model validations so the purpose of the model validation is to verify the identified model that we get either is accurate or not right the models that represent the process under consideration adequately so in order in other words the underlying mechanism which produce the data set is adequately models so this normally involves stati statistical analysis of the residuals the pre predictive capability of the models and the unsatisfactory result at this stage will lead to doubts of the about the model structure and estimations and may occasionally require re-examination of the experimental design so it involves a stat statistical analysis in order we validate the models just to name a few uh, we can there are a few statistics uh, method such as a correlation test we call it a ct mean sum square error uh, mse or normalize sum square error nsse so this the statistic statistical analysis that require uh, requires uh, we to go through in order to validate either the systems is accurate or not okay and lastly, after all the steps, uh, uh, is a model applications. So once a proper model has been selected, estimated, and validated, then it can be applied for uh, its uh, intended applications, either in simulation or predictions or in a control design. 